Here's Robert Hunt, arttop10.com, and here we are today at Tate Britain in London, and this is the Sergeant and Fashion Press View, a major exhibition dedicated to the great portrait painter John Singer Sargent, and it's obviously, as you can see, by like this, um, the dress over here on the right, and you'll see the dresses around it, it's sort of matching up singer sergeant with uh, the fashion uh, and it's going on about how he actually kind of like quite purposely styled the fashions of the people he painted so like for instance this i think is like a sort of theater cloak with like a little pink sash through it uh, but he particularly carefully pinned these things on his victims or his uh, people he was painting and um, so he could you know dramatize the dress as it were so you can see the dress there which looks like kind of you know black you can see that hint of pink but then if you come over to the portrait the painting itself you can see he's really brought out all that pink flashiness of the thing to really dramatize the whole thing i cannot help thinking that the woman's right arm looks like a chicken foot but um that's just really weird frankly one of the things that's actually quite interesting beyond all the stuff about the fashion is it's absolutely beautifully painted and he said he liked doing black on black painting like franz Hals. but you can see all this beautiful black that you've got like a very very dark raw umber background to that painting and then on top of that you've got these differing blacks you've got a real dark and light um, contrast going on there which is absolutely fantastic don't want to forget about that when you're looking at the fashion bit apparently he would spend so much time pinning these clothing onto the people they get jabbed with the little pins but anyway, so the exhibition, I guess, is trying to say that he not just painted the people, but he spent quite a long time, quite literally, um, staging them. So he would stage these people before he painted it. So it was all, I don't know, contrived. And yet you still got quite... If you look at that picture, you can still really see that woman's face and you get a sense of her personality. Or maybe the yellow and the pink is meant to be a sense of her personality as well. Anyway, she's got really good eyes. Anyway, let's keep on strolling and see what happens in room two. So here we are in room two, women in black. Uh, loads of paintings of people in black. As we already said, uh, Sergeant loved using black. And it just so happened around about this time, they also managed to make new different blacks for clothing. Um, it's quite funny, there's a good story here that when um, he went to visit Claude Monet, Sergeant couldn't do any painting at all because Molly didn't have any black. Anyway, there's quite a few funky paintings in here. There's this uh, great painting over here of um, sort of meant to be a kind of statuesque old style pose. But when he first painted this, he painted uh, her with the strap falling off her arm. So I think you can see in this photograph, yeah, there's a photograph that originally the strap was falling off her arm. But it caused absolute outcry and trauma and unhappiness by everybody. They all went completely mad about the fact that the strap wasn't on her arm. Um, and eventually it had to be painted back on. And he left Paris in disgrace as that strap was not on there originally. Just shows you how upset people get about things. Kind of like the way my TikTok about Yoko Ono was banned by TikTok because of the naked bottoms. What well, you've got to say again, like all these things, the paintings are just magnificent. I mean, look, look at the absolute amazing black um, bows. But when you look at them quite closely, they're so little there. They're just like little swishy brush strokes. It's not overworked or traumatized. Even all that lace is done so gently. You got that beautiful gray sort of neck lace and obviously the black and white contrast just the hint of the blue and the necklace of the boy and the um and you've got blue shadows on his trousers which is kind of cool they're really beautiful paintings really stunning you got that lovely dark background on that one then over here on this woman you've got a more i don't know is that like a white and burnt umber background but you still got to look at that fantastic black and white and the left arm of oh, that woman over here such an amazing kind of grey 
It's just creeping out into the light, the grey of that left arm. But look, you've still got an amazing face. It's got a lot of detail in the face, even though the rest of it's quite gentle. Let's have a quick glimpse of these other two over here. So this one's got a bit of pink at the bottom, just to jazz up the uh, black and a bit of gold. It's a really heavily glazed, this one, with much more like a sort of burnt umber background. I suppose the black has got a cool colour against the burnt umber. Um, and then this one over here, that looks like weirdly like a priest, but it isn't. That's Jane Evans, who ran a boarding house at Eton College, wearing a tailored black wool suit, relieved only by a gold fob chain, a symbol of her position. <laughs> it's brilliant, she was described as able to see through a boy as if he were a pane of glass. Oh, I see in her clothing, masculine in style and severity, conveys an air of authority. She does. <laughs> Sergeant later recalled his surprise at the honesty, directness and power of her personality. Look at that amazing bit of dark black here. You've got all the black clothing, but darker blacks. It's weird how you can have so many blacks in a painting. Absolutely stunning. Well, let's room on. Okay, so we're in room three, which is sitting for Sergeant. Um, and just talking about people who suffer. And basically, they've got this cracking painting over here called Miss Elise Palmer, a lady in white. But it's absolutely wonderful, this painting. Look at that. You've got that sort of crinkly cream dress she's wearing. But then on top of that, you've got that extraordinary soft lilac sort of shawl. And you can see the texture of the two of those things. And then you can see the softness of the hair and the hardness of the wood behind. Quite extraordinary how well he's done that. Apart from it, she does look like something out of a Stephen King novel. He might come murder you, but um, it is still pretty cool. Um, she said it went on for days, the painting, which is quite interesting. Uh, Sergeant seemed to be quite a private person from what it says here. Um, and then they also talk about how apparently there's this massive link between fashion and painting. And people would actually say, when they bought a gown, they would say, will it paint? Which is an intriguing comment. You've got these also extraordinary drawings by um, Sergeant over here. Look at that, you can see just amazingly good he was at drawing. Which is interesting, look at that, all those lines are so perfect. And then loose as well. And you've got quite a lot of other fancy pictures in here. You've got this one here. Where does this come from? I've seen this before somewhere. Harvard Art Museum. Maybe anyway, but that's quite Nothing in here is black, particularly. I'm going for different colours. Look at this extraordinary one here. She looks really, really like a thin thing. Those little white violet sections of the painting as well. This is Robert Harrison. Apparently, he was a friend of her, showing their passion for music. Oh, this is a good one. This one prancing about with her arms out. Mrs. Hugh Hammersley became good friends with her, regularly hosted him at a London home alongside artists Walter Sugden and Augustus John. Intriguing, isn't it? She recorded her sitting for Sergeant that some days he would work the whole time without ceasing as one possessed, while others would spend playing the piano, which he did charmingly. Intriguingly, oh wow, what's that? Sergeant's studio. Check it out, it looks nice. Look at it, what is that? it almost looks like a weird robot in the centre of that room. Good windows. Nice. Alright, and over here, I presume these are... That must be a couple over there, but down here this must be... Um, has he got that? Oh, that's the weird one, it's not so much black, but a lot of white in that one. And the child with the big flowers. Look how loose those flowers are. Now, is this the dress? Who is wearing that dress is the question. That is, this seems to be House of Worth, these dresses. Is that the dress that's over here? Can't tell. Doesn't seem to be the dress that's being worn. Anyway, wonderful white arm. Oh man, look at the pink of those arms. How you can actually see the flesh coming through the sort of see-through taffeta. Absolutely amazing. The bodies are always quite loose and the heads are always far more. Go 
galvanise an organisation. We've got a big yellow dress over here, kind of thing. So these are just sort of examples of dresses in the House of Worth. Charles Frederick Worth, designer who dominated Parisian fashion in the second half of the 19th century. Born in Lincolnshire, England, he moved to Paris following an apprenticeship in London. His most successful years coincided with the height of Sargent's crew as a portraitist. How bizarre. Intriguing. Let's just have a little look at the pictures down this side as well. So you've got these two. I've seen that painting before. Look at that massive vase in the corner. Absolutely bizarre. That's quite thick, some of the paint on this one. And you can feel again the sense of the sort of velvetness of that red, red um, dress. These two posed for Sergeant in the drawing room of the home. Betty wears a red velvet evening gown and holds an open fan. Oh yeah, and the one on the right began selling at the Slay's School of Art shortly after. When they should run a gallery in London. It's intriguing. He seems to kind of be networking with high net worth individuals at the same time, doesn't he? Intriguing. And then these two here. Oh man, that's quite a freaky picture. With the head just lurking on the side there. Mrs. Fake Warren and her daughter Rachel. There's actually photos of them over here in the corner. Oh, that's quite freaky. I think it actually appears to be photos of them. Oh, Sergeant Painter, the poet and scholar, Gretchen Watson and her daughter at Fenway Court in Boston. That must be photos of the thing happening. Although you can't help wondering if it's like AI generated. But, um, quite extraordinary. Check out Sergeant prancing around with his paintbrushes and his cigarette. <laughs> right, let's keep on strolling into the next room. Got a couple of pictures here of um, Sergeant drawing Ethel Barrymore, not Drew Barrymore, Ethel Barrymore. But um, kind of like this picture is quite fascinating of him. Look at him holding his cigar, sketching away, looking quite serious, but like a sort of weird Churchill. Um, quite intriguing. Quite intriguing. Just got a little vibe of this room here. Which is pretty good, frankly. It's quite a nice exhibition, much larger than I thought it was going to be. Although all these um, dresses don't necessarily seem to be on the sitters in the restroom, I think they're just here as a demonstration of the kind of thing that happens. In uh, room four, uh, I think it's talking about how uh, while in his uh, commissioned portraits, it would, you know, very, some were masculine, some were feminine here, there's a bit of a blurring of those identities. But apart from anything, this is an absolutely brilliant picture over here of Sir Philip Sassoon. Um, you got a great painting of him there, looking dramatic and intense with his hand out. But then if you contrast that with his actual photo, it's quite extraordinary because, in all honesty, he's far more interesting in the um, painting than he is in the photo. And the photo is quite boring. Looks a bit sort of chubbier and a bit more straightforward. But in the um, uh, painting, he's absolutely mega dramatic. Rather uh, enigmatic. It's quite interesting how you can see he's really dramatised them in the portrait. So they're almost much more interesting in the portrait than they are in the photo. Let's have a little stroll over here. This guy was a doctor. Uh, I think he wore quite flamboyant suits. Yeah, he dressed in fashionable tailor suits. But in this, he's at home subverting the conventions for portraits of professional men by depicting the intimacy of domestic space, wearing a crimson dressing gown and Turkish slippers. But uh, beyond that, it's quite interesting. I mean, if you look at his hands, you can see he's got these really kind of feminine hands tucked into that belt. Sort of long, slender, thin. It's quite interesting. They are quite sort of feminine and soft. Um... And he looks good in his red outfit, and he's got his little Turkish slippers peeking out the bottom, which is quite funky. Um, and we stroll back over here. You've got this um, uh, this woman with just her head popping out in a sort of dashing moment. And then over here on the right, this is what they said was like the epitome of a sort of um, uh, late 19th century dandy. And when he turned up, Sergeant said this guy 
had to wear this guy, otherwise known as Graham Robinson, had to wear this long black coat. Um, yeah, so that's quite interesting. Got some rather nice Lisa pictures over here in the corner as well. These are Vernon Lee. Oh, look, these are a bit more unfinished, but they're rather kind of loose and funky. Look at that, lovely. You can see that burnt umber before it's reorganised in the back of that picture there, which is nice. And then again in this one, you can see the scribbly sort of grey in the background here. Quite interesting. You must have really worked these pictures up over time because they're quite scruffled and nice at this point, and then they become more and more organised. Intriguing. Really nice. They're really good. You can really see the painting. Oh yeah, you can look at this one again here properly. But you can see all that lovely brown scruffled on in the left-hand side there. That sort of burnt umber. And even when he's done it quickly, you can see the glasses. He's quickly whipped in a little sort of glint of light across the glasses. Really, really amazing painting. This is Violet Paget. Vernon Lee chose a name because of the archer leading undecided oh, where should be a man or woman. Her preference for severe or masculine, masculine clothing indicate her refusal to conform to contemporary patterns of femininity. Wonderful picture. Room five, performance. Portraits are performances negotiated between sitter and artist. So it's, it's a bit about, about how um, the sitters love to dress themselves up and dressing up and sort of flamboyantly prancing around was sort of a kind of thing done at this time anyway. Um, so for instance, like you got over here this really good yellow um, uh, dress, La Carmencita, Carmen del Sol Marino better known as Carmen Cital, as a Spanish dancer who performed across the United States, Europe and South America. Sergeant found her bewilderingly superb and saw her perform on multiple occasions in New York where he painted her in a borrowed studio. She also danced at a private party at his studio in, 19, in 1895. Um, what's quite nice, you can actually see the dress. So you've actually got the dress and the painting of the dress. And the dress is actually kind of quite fantastic in real life. Look at it with those sort of beautiful um, pearls and jewels encrusted into it, a thick. And look at it, you've got really nice orangey yellow and yellow. He hasn't actually picked up on that in the picture. But the picture is interesting because the actual yellow, the whole yellow of the dress is quite, I mean, again, it's quite loosely and lightly done, apart from the head, which is really perfection. But it's quite flamboyantly painted in that dress and it was awfully put in quite dark bits of red or orange which really set off the yellow actually and a little bit of blue in the shadow to set off the yellow as well oh this actually must be her dancing over here in the corner mustn't it check it out there she is go for it mega dancer oh she's vanished um intriguing over here you've got quite a strange one here this is meant to be a Javanese dancer. Um, well, I can't help thinking, wondering if this is actually by Sergeant. Sometimes I get obsessed that some of the paintings in these exhibitions are fakes. Um, it just seems rather blobbed in. Even the loose paintings in the other room are quite meticulous and beautiful. Well, that looks a bit chunked. Come over here, we've got this fantastic painting of this guy. He just needs a big dog beside him. Um, politician and huntsman Thomas Lister. He succeeded his father to become fourth Baron Ripperdale, personified Edwardian aristocracy. The sergeant asked to paint him. He was fastidious about his appearance. He never stepped out of the picture frame. <laughs> well, this is an unconventional hunting costume, known as the Rat Catcher, that this guy habitually wore, rather than a conventional riding outfit. He looks rather good with that main sort of riding thing, these big black boots. Uh, and over here you've got this rather wonderful Lady Macbeth. She was like a famous actress. And after um, Sergeant saw her, he decided he had to paint her. Look at her face, man. She looked completely insane. With her eyes going a bit crazy. Apparently Edward Byrne Jones came in and chatted to Sergeant about the colours while he was painting it. Because it, Edward Byrne Jones, obviously pre-Raphaelite. And this whole thing does have a weirdly pre-Raphaelite vibe to it. Um, 
I can't show you the film of the actual dress on the right because you can't film it, which is a real shame because the actual dress itself is quite extraordinary. Um, and the red sort of bit you can just see in the corner has all these lions and tigers and stuff around it. So then if we go around over here, you've got this, um, uh, this one dressed up in a sort of um, Turkish robe and a turban. So this would be a classic, like, dressing up to show off kind of thing. Um, and it's all very, very contrived, but it's still kind of rather good, isn't it? And look at her face, gauging directly with the viewer. Um, but yeah, as they say, they, you know, they, they'd, European women often wore Western South Asian clothing, start a little regard for their cultural history. But um, it's an interesting painting. I see, instead of black and white, it's white and brown, really, isn't it? Green in it. It's interesting, the colours are always very controlled, down to very simple few colours, which does make everything have a nice consistency to it. Really interesting, actually, that controlled use of colour throughout everything. Which actually is another weird thing about the Javanese dance. There's so many colours in there, it looks really weird. Um, and I think this must be like a demonstration of a kind of oriental dress people would have worn. Which is actually rather beautiful with all these little flowers on it. Nice, okay, let's keep on rolling. Everybody, so here we are, room six, cutting a figure. Uh, check out this guy with a giant sword and his big regalia. That boy is just very scratched in in the background. And we got another. It's a good outfit, a good white, a good white, it's good at whites as well as blacks actually. All the different whites in that. That's Charles Stewart, six mark with the London Brie, carrying the great sword of state, the coronation of King Edward the Seventh. <laughs> Intriguing. And this guy is Colonel Ian Hamilton. First portrait for an officer in military uniform, commissioned by the sitter to accompany a portrait of his wife. <laughs> That's quite interesting, I like the black and the red combo. That's quite cool. Ooh. And we stroll on down here. Sir Frank Swettenham, the British colonial administrator. My goodness me, he looks like a British colonial administrator. The hands are weirdly telling. Look at that weird claw got a slight obsession that he did weird things with people's hands if he didn't like them. I don't know why I have a feeling he didn't like this guy. Um, intriguing. Right, let's swoop on down here and we'll have a quick glimpse. So these again are other people. But what it also said is that the portraits that were made, you know, loads of people would go and look at them, get excited about them. Uh, so it's very much like, you know, celebrities in fashion magazines today. But I guess it wasn't as... I guess it wasn't as easy to find uh, pictures of people. Maybe the portraits are the only place you really saw them. But maybe the portraits also defined them somehow. You can actually see over here, which is rather wonderful, if you look on the left-hand side of that arm, you can see the paint going over and under the whole time. You can see just look, that brown goes over the arm, but some of the arm goes over the paint. It's absolutely rather brilliant how he's done that. He was really good at painting which sort of doesn't seem to get mentioned much. Madden Rebon Supercassor, this is. They're among sergeants first class in Paris. Loads of these people seem to play piano. He seems to spend half the time prancing around, sending people dresses, playing the piano with them while he did their portraits. Um, got this one in her gold dress. She's got an exceptionally elongated head. I bet she didn't look quite like that. I bet he just keeps making them look better. This is a rather wonderful dress. You can see in the picture over here. You can see these lovely little bows on the edge of the arms. The bows look really cool. And those bows then reappear over here in the painting. This is a really nice painting. Look at that. It's actually got, it's actually got green eyes. Or blue. But the whites of the eyes are green or blue. Quite extraordinary. But yeah, it's again a really good, really good actual painting. Look, you get that sense of that velvet of that dress and that rather wonderful bow on her arm. It's also incredibly pale, her skin, which must be part of it. <laughs> Quite extraordinary. I love the way it's done the necklace around her neck as well. Just little blobby bits of paint, but it turns up so beautifully. 
quite a lot of different colours in that necklace as well, like the reds on the far right hand side. He is a rather magnifico painting. Now if we curve around here, there's one more portrait we can have a look at in here. I quite like this one because I think he did it um, Sergeant McGann's portrait in Venice, posing Lady Helen on the balcony of her apartment overlooking the Grand Canal. She was wearing a white satin dress, but towards the end of the sittings, he scraped it out, quickly repainted her in black. Check it out. Just imagine how confident you are to scrape out the dress you've painted and then just stick in another black one. It actually looks as if literally he's painted the black one over the top of the white dress, which is rather intriguing. Rather intriguing. <laughs> It's quite abstract, the whole of that pink dress, actually. Right, anyway, wonderfully painted as usual. Let's roll on into the next room. Uh, so this is room seven, the Van Dyke of our time. His career in Britain coincided with a revival of interest in historic portraits, portraitists such as Joshua Reynolds. Sergeant adapted style to resemble the opulence of the Grand Manor. Portrait layers amplified. Anyway, this painting is absolutely fantastic. Look at it. It's a real... Stunning painting. He painted quickly, it was just done in six sittings. <laughs> but he helped choose. He visited Lady Agnew in her London home to discuss a portrait and consider several different gowns. Finally, choosing one of white silk with sheer organza sleeves. But the violet in this is just amazing. The way he's painted that. Look at these beautiful different bits of violet the dark violet, the light violet. Absolutely amazing. And the swishes of paint. Quite extraordinary, frankly. Just amazing. And then this is quite interesting, this one over here. The Honourable Pauline Astor. So these are like uh, the people her father, William Waldorf Astor, purchased the grand homes of Cliveston and Hever Castle. Man, they must have had places like the Waldorf Astoria in um, America. But uh, yeah, he was saying how he was careful to avoid any nouveau riche kind of significance and instead paints her in the kind of Clifton uh, landscape. She's got an amazing face though, look at it. Does seem entitled. Look at that fantastic dog ripping apart her gown. Absolutely brilliant. And this is a quick glimpse. You've got loads of other opulent -y kind of paintings in here. You've got an amazing amount of really good paintings. Look at that. It's another stunning painting in here. All of these things. Look at that amazing black bit in the body. Quite extraordinary. Weird, pasty face. But um, yeah, loads of loads of other good ones in here. Quite extraordinary, really. The painting is just worth coming to see. The painting, frankly, don't need to worry too much about the rest of it. Fashion. This one seems to be uh, a bit more about how he wasn't always just dumb um, doing like. Uh, this seems to be more like his own little paintings he did when he was off and away in the summer. So he wasn't quite focused so much on the portraits. It seems to be people he bumped into or met. But I think the thing that's most fascinating about these is they're a bit more impressionist maybe. But also half the time the figure seems to be lost in the background. It's almost like he's trying to sort of disintegrate them. Like especially here, the figures are sort of all merged and lost and blurred into the greens of the trees. It's almost as if, because in all the others, you, in the, all the other those portraits, you've got quite a definitive like burnt umber background, the blacks and the whites, and here it's more like a weird overall composition of trying to. Seems to be trying to do something else, like especially with this one, like here with a stream. She's like merging into that stream, and disappearing into it, and then these two. These two people here, two girls in white dresses. These are alpine paintings, but I mean, it's like they're almost like they're part of the, the hills and merging into them as well. And then particularly in this one where they're dressed up in their Turkish dresses in the Italian Alps, bizarrely enough. Once again, it seems like they're sort of melting into the water, literally. Suddenly that guy at the back or woman with the arms literally melting into the water. It's quite weird because that sort of pre I suppose it's more like, I'd say, maybe Bonnard kind of things or paintings in the future where they're, they're, they're more trying to, you know, they're doing paintings out of windows, but they're trying to, trying to uh, destroy the division between the window and what's outside and in the interior. 
So it's quite a weird sort of preemptive of that sort of destruction of the more organized painting. Really interesting, these ones. By 1907, he'd basically stopped painting commissioned portraits. Much of his late career, bizarrely enough, was dedicated to large-scale mural products in Boston. And anyway, this painting over here is absolutely fascinating. The Countess of Rock, Savage, Sybil Sassoon, who I think he'd been painting for ages. Over here, and you can see also the dress that's involved in it there, which is so cool, isn't it? Look, the amazing thing is he's actually made the dress look better in the painting than in real life, because the details on it are even more dramatic in the painting than they are in real life. He seems to be able to take things that are in paintings and just make them, take things from real life and make them more dramatic and exciting in the painting, which seems to be a skill. But this little picture down here, which he's based the painting on, I think in some ways, so this is something like from 1616, that he's gently based the picture on. I think it's absolutely fascinating. Picasso is always, always doing paintings of other paintings. I think it's so interesting how many <clears throat> artists are always doing paintings of other paintings and then changing them. And it's not often appreciated. There's a pretty cool picture of him over here, lurking in the back on the left, looking like a giant guy with a big beard, or a bit like a dog in a suit. But um, quite interesting. Anyway, overall, so let's round this thing up. Uh, I think it's actually a really, really good exhibition. It is quite interesting, all the stuff about the clothing and the fashion and how he would stylize it and put it together. Um, it's intriguing the meticulous effort he took in making sure the image was good before he even painted it. But it's also just an amazing exhibition as far as his painting's concerned. He is obviously just an astonishing painter and it's worth just coming to look at the paint, the way he's put the paint on, the beautiful brush strokes, the absolutely incredible use of white and black. And um, yeah, stunning, absolutely stunning worth it for that. And even more so how he takes things in real life and makes them even better in painting. So really good, definitely worth coming to. Um, and I think you will enjoy it very much. So please like and subscribe for other art topics. 10 reviews of art exhibitions and interviews with artists. Avid Zain, Adivarafiz. Bye bye.